And welcome back everybody to Swooning Over Stands, a Grunkle dating simulator. I almost finished the chili that I brought in with me this session, and I got Travis with me. Hello again! You didn't need to know one of those things. I'll let you guess what it was. That I was here the whole time. He's here during every session. Even the sessions I'm by myself, playing games by myself. He's standing in the background and watching me and giving me loving support. This is true. <laughs> Waddles joins you, surprisingly. <clears throat> and you have some fun petting his belly and taking pictures as a distraction from your thoughts. It's almost like he knew something was up. Where did Mabel send him? Is he infiltrating your safety zone for intel? Oink. Oink. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mabel doesn't... <clears throat> I mean, Waddles doesn't oink like that. Mabel, it was you the whole time! Ha <laughs> ha, you caught me! I'm going to back to bed now. You better be ready for the date tomorrow. Otherwise, you're gonna be in trouble. Waddles likes to eat people. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that last part? Have a good night! You decide not to question that and lie back onto your mattress to try to relax. Waddles settles by your side, the real one this time, and snuggles up. Thanks for your support, little buddy. Do, do, you, oink, really, oink. do you really eat people? Mm, oink. Oh. <clears throat> I'm just trying not to eat me, okay? Mm, oink, oink, oink. Eventually, you get tired of your phone and decide to close your eyes. But you can't just stop thinking about what Mabel said. Remember, he likes to eat people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for just knowing. Stan, <laughs> a romantic? Is that what Mabel said? Yeah, right. No way. <laughs> he likes stealing pictures of clowns. Clowning is his favorite, favorite artist. He sure does love to clown around. A <clears throat> maybe charming in his own way, sure. But the type of guy to go on an actual date, planned by Mabel? What was Mabel planning anyway? She might go for something fancy or formal, but Stan really seems in his element with the hands-on nitty-gritty stuff. Hopefully calling it a date won't ruin the natural thing you have going. Spoiler, it won't. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> I got assured by the universe for some reason that it won't, so I'm doing okay. Your eyes finally close for good, feeling weighed down and heavy. You give Waddles a pat while you still can, before slipping into unconsciousness. Oh, I thought we were about to like do a dream sequence. <laughs> Me too, I was like, wow. Has it ever done that kind of transition before? No, actually. It's always just kind of faded to black and just been like the, yeah. the next thing, right? You slip out of a dream and back into your room in real life. The skylight outside and the sky is light outside and groggly. You feel regret as you realize Waddle's comforting weight isn't there anymore. It was never there. Boink, boink. Boink. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, that's not what you're regretting. You're regretting the end of what you feel like was a really good dream. Yeah, what are you talking about? It's me! Stan <laughs> taking you with him to the lake. You think, and somehow ended up in water? Sunlight streamed down on him as he grinned at you, his white shirt sticking wet to his skin! Splash contest! Ah, oh, man, I'm the best of these! <laughs> Prepare to eat your words, Tyler! That'd be a date, all right. <clears throat> I bet you that's exactly what's going to happen. This situation's gonna happen, but it's going to be uh, against expectation of what the dream is giving us. Yep. So it's gonna be something like a like a cannonball contest. Oh yeah. I can see Stan doing that. Oh, I could too. But it's the last thing you're expecting from today. Laughing quietly at yourself, you glance at the clock to see if uh, it's time to get ready for the day anyway. A little while later, and you're dressed for a day at the lake, meaning dressed for a regular day of summer. You're not sure what to expect. So, you know, kept it casual. You would have eaten breakfast with Stan and the kids, but you were barred from the kitchen by Mabel, who was shielding you from a surprise. Instead, it's Mabel cakes. Instead, yeah. you were handed a slice of toast Yay! topped with an oddly cheery sunny side up egg and waved outside. Man, that toast rocks. 
Oh boy, Travis, you're bringing the Ruby campaign into this. It really is bleeding into my personality, though. <clears throat> you see, I run a homebrew Ruby tabletop campaign, usually on Sunday nights, but honestly, just whenever we can. And uh, I'm DMing it, and then I got Travis and Elena as players, and then a couple other friends of ours, Hunter and Tony. And uh, Travis's character just really likes toast. A lot. Just always, forever, constantly. Even his main NPC character friend in the campaign always provides him with toast. So really, I'm guilty of it too, because I'm just feeding his, uh, I'm feeding it. <laughs> toast obsession. Now that you're out in the sunlight, you can see that Mabel stuck a smiley face sticker on top of the egg. You peel it off with a shrug and dig in. Leaning against the scarlet door of the El Diablo, <laughs> you stare up at the totem pole outside. The shack, thinking about how it both stands out and fits perfectly in with the shack's aesthetic. I agree with that. It's obviously part of the weirdness of the tourist stop, but you're not sure why. It looks pretty well made, even if it's kind of creepy. That whenever you move the eyes at the top, it's always following you. Ooh. <laughs> Suddenly, the front door of the house <clears throat> bursts open and a flurry of sequins and glittery hair clips flies out, attaching to a very... Exci attached to a very oh, trailer, you're finally out. Mabel. Trailer, are you ready? You're not spying any conspiratory nudges or winks, so you kind of think Mabel's dropped the whole date setup thing. Well, at least for now. Oh, trailer, you're so naive. You feel a little dumb for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> for what? Fishing? Yeah, aren't you excited? This isn't just regular lake fishing, this is Lake Gravity Falls fishing, where adventure awaits, danger is hot on your heels, and the island shifts and moves in the corners of your eyes. Also, there might be demons, or dinosaurs, or giant lake monsters, something like that. Yay! I, the, I'm sorry, the what move? Monsters! Wait, what monsters? <laughs> Are we talking about Scuttlebutt Island? I love telling that one. So we were out on the shore, right? And we saw this giant. Hey, you kids better not be giving Trailer that lake monster story again. Stan, we all know it's baloney. Stan, stop. I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, you're keeping me from knowing the truth. Yeah, what are you talking about? Stan comes out of the shack with several fishing rods in the crook of his arm, as well as a large tackle box in his right hand. In his other hand are four fishing hats, with haphazard embroidery on the front of two of them. A closer look reveals that they are actually the names stitched onto the hats, reading Mabel and Dippy. <laughs> Gungle Stan, <clears throat> you don't have to pretend not to believe us anymore. I swear it really happened. It was, it just rose out of the water and Stan chasing us. And we had to row back as fast as we could and was speaking in creepy monster language like <laughs> And what? <clears throat> what did I say? No more of that monster talk, or you're gonna scare Tryler away. Remember, Tryler? Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? Both kids look a little disappointed, but leave it at that. Stan puts on the smile and drops Dipper and Mabel's respective fishing hats on their heads, and Mabel tugs hers on while running to the car while Dipper follows, exchanging his usual hat for the fishing one. Stan looks out after them and turns to face you. Eh, kids love to exaggerate. Pretty sure it wasn't that terrifying. <laughs> Besides, I've been through worse. You hear that, kids? Only your crookle Stan's got the right to complain. Stan hefts his fishing supplies over to one arm. His one strong arm. Using the other to dig around in his pocket for the car keys. He tosses the rods, hats, and tackle box inside. Mabel's hand darts in before Stan can close the trunk, grabbing a hat. Before you can tell what it says, it's shoved into your hands. You smooth out the fabric to read, Trailer. Oh, God. Stan groans. <clears throat> Mabel, I thought I told you I wasn't going to give it to them. But you worked so hard stitching it this morning. You even got the letters the right way on. Well, mostly. 
Mabel gets into the back seat next to Dipper, leaving you to look at the hat more closely. The ceiling is a little messy, and one of the letters is backwards, but Stan clearly put some amount of effort and care into it. Speaking of Stan, he's staring at the hat Mabel shoved at you, thinking of something to sell. <laughs> there, there to go. Did you really? Did you really make this for me? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Stan scratches the back of his head and shrugs a little. Yeah, uh, Mabel wouldn't let me leave until I made you one. So it was nicer if, uh, if all of us had magic hats or something. Hmm. Immediately put the hat on. Oh, you know it. <clears throat> you put the hat on and beam at Stan. He doesn't respond, just reaching up and closes the trunk. But you see, he looks almost too privately pleased to give comment. There we go. And on that note, everybody, I think that's where we're going to leave it off. So thank you for joining us on this episode of Swooning Over Stands. We hope to see you in the next one, because remember, every video is a party, and you're always invited to the next one. See you next time.